Marcus Hayes, Fight Hub TV, powered by Stage Front VIP, here with the one and only, the coach of Javante Tank Davis, Calvin Ford. Calvin, how are you tonight? I'm doing great, man. How you doing? We just had a media workout. We saw a lot from Tank. We saw speed. We saw power. We saw movement. Uh, at times, I was standing next to you during the workout, and I could just hear you laughing under your breath. Uh, where does that laugh come from, coach? Um, some of the things that he's doing, when you see Iverson playing with the ball, you see Mike Gray going for the kill. That's what it reminds me of when I'm looking at him. Coach, we talked off camera. Uh, you also kind of fought back a little bit of tears um, while watching your young, and as you call him, Tank Davis, uh, doing his media workout. Uh, you mentioned to me before we got on camera that you felt that way because you were thinking about all those that came before him and that either one, lives were cut short due to violence in the streets, or number two, they just didn't get an opportunity to be where Tank is. Let's talk about that for a second. Well, I always tell Tank, don't let our guys that came before us death go in vain. And everything that we're doing, I think, is a blessing, divine blessing, that all the work he put in to be that young and seeing the conversations that me and Coach Kenny had with some of the youngins, you know, and him being around them, watching them, trying to keep them off the streets, trying to do what we do, and he here. And when I see him working, I look at some of the other fighters that was before tank time. You know, he was just a kid. And I'm looking at it, I'm seeing him doing things, and I'm seeing fighters that I train, fighters that Kenny trained, that he taking glimpse of some of their personality of boxing. And I'm like, you know, and I'm the only one who can see it. Kenny said, and he said, they said, dang, I know you still go that far back. I said, no, you can't help it because they was the forefront of us. They was the one that laid the, the, the blueprint down on what we did, and he, he actually ran with it, you know. His goal is to open up the door so the rest of them can come through it. And he's doing it. Who are some of these blueprint names that you talk about? Uh, who do you see glimpses of when you watch Tank doing his thing in the ring there? Um, we have Angelo Ward. Angelo Ward, he used to be, my, I, like, I used to play a game called King of the Ring. When, no matter how big you was, how strong you was, he wasn't getting out the ring. Then we had Black Ice, Coy Cummins, Vicious. Kenny took him all the way in the top ten. Uh, we had Julius Trinity. He was he was vicious. Um, Kenny used to always say, "They said, yo, he done." I took him down to my job at Phillips Food, took him in the freezer, and used to train him, right? And Kenny said, "Yo, what you did to him?" Um, we had so many. Oh, my my other son, um, Kade Gurley, um, that really introduced me to Tank. And and Kade was like, he no nonsense, no nonsense. This was my son, you know, um, Roger. Um, um, one that, that stands out the most is, um, Dad, why can't, uh, I, I still get emotional when I think about his name, and I can't say his name right now, but Rock. Rock, when he got killed, we was actually on our way to Vegas, I mean, to um, Georgia, I mean, um, um, New Jersey, to a tournament. Um, one of Vito, Vito was on the car. His father was doing shows, amateur shows in Jersey. And we was going at it and the tank had told me that Roger, I mean that um, Rock got killed and it hurted us. And you know, sometimes I still feel it. So that's one of the beliefs that I had that he's looking down on us. Cause he would have been actually one of our first pros as coming out of Upton Boxing. And coach, Tank Davis, um, the fights just keep bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, how do you help him maintain his focus with so much distraction, uh, with so many people calling his name, with so many people with things to say? How do you guys maintain such a tight-knitted group? Well, first and foremost, his family. You know, if you look at some of his interviews that he talked about, he always talked about day one and loyalty. And he watched us three. He sit there and watch me, Kenny, and Russ, how tight we are. Uh, he see me and Kenny go through our arguments and whatnot, but when he look up, we still there together, no matter what. Um, it's hard to find a friend in boxing, but when you find one in boxing, you better hold on to him. Coach, earlier, uh, as we drift back to the fight, um, you told me off camera that you did not want Tank to knock out Ryan Garcia, that you wanted 12 long rounds of agony and punishment because you really wanted to find out if Ryan Garcia really wanted to fight. Can you elaborate on that, please? 
Well, you've seen, every time Tank knocks somebody out, they want a rematch. It was a lucky punch. I want Tank to punish them so they can sit there and say, man, I don't even want to, do I really want to box anymore? Because I'm trying to send a message to the others. Stop playing with us. We humble, we humble people. You know what I'm saying? When the time comes, them fights are going to be made. I said in the last press conference in, um, um, in L.A., this fight right here is making all the others, what, fight. You start seeing big announcements now because the fighters, they want to fight. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's a process behind everything. So just be patient. Stop calling people out, you know, and whatnot. If y'all got a, a, a honest, legit beef, that's, that's normal. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, get your people, I call them the here's to be, to make the fight. And then let the public hear that there's been an announcement that the fight is being what? Made. Then we know it's real. Instead of all that woo, 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 you know what I'm saying? Don't, take your time. Take your time. It's a process. that We didn't get here overnight. We grind. Um, you heard Tank said it. We don't ask for the big fights. You know what I'm saying? We did what we was told because we was company people. Now it's our turn. You know? Coach, you, as you get ready to face a uh, boxing Hall of Famer in his own right, uh, Joe Goosen, um, one of the best trainers of all time in the fight game, one of the classiest gentlemen in the fight game. Uh, you and Kenny Ellis come together to make a two-headed monster. How forward are you guys looking to putting a stamp on this fight and showing exactly who you guys are as coaches uh, as you've been unheralded up to this point? I call Kenny Ellis my Bible. I'm good. I can't wait to the time. You know, he does his job, I does my job, and it comes together. Right now, you see the work. Only thing I just got to make sure my little youngin is just listening that night. But watching that last fight with Hector, he's looked like he's becoming his own coach inside that ring. I mean, I watched his shots, how his defense was. I mean, and then watching him now, he's coming into his own. He's being awakened of who he really is. I talked to Showtime, Showtime Sean Porter a little bit ago, and he let me know that he thinks that this fight may push Tank into his prime, that he probably is not in his prime yet. Uh, how much do you believe that, and how excited does that make you? Because it, 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 my, my vision of Tank is really coming true. And like y'all seeing it, y'all actually seeing him the maturity, how he looking, how he doing things, how he putting the team. I mean, Tank put this team together. I just keep it together, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, I, I try to look at what he like, what he don't like, what he want around. He lets me know, he, he, he'll let me know what he want, and we make sure, and then that's what makes us so strong, you know what I'm saying? Because we took him this far, and that's his job to take us the rest of the way. You talked about Tank being his own coach in the ring, Coach. Um, I spoke to Tank earlier, and I asked him about the process of breaking his opponents down. Um, what part do you play in breaking the opponents down, uh, being the one watching for in between the ropes? Confirmation. Confirmation. You've been believing me this long. So when I say something and it's already in his head, he knows it's a short shot. What cues do you look for in opponents? Because it seems like you guys are always knocking guys out, really hurting guys. What is it about the opponents? Is there some type of a clue or a trigger that you look for in an opponent when he's breaking down or running out of gas? Like I said, I thank my Lord that Tank is boxing. He could be doing something else. He ain't playing with this. He don't, you know what I'm saying? You can't play boxing. He ain't playing boxing. Listen to what I just said. He's not playing boxing. Simple as that. Prediction for 16 days from now, Saturday night? I'm looking for punishment. Can you withstand? Can you withstand? That's all I'm going to say. Can you withstand? A little rendition on New Edition. Can you stand the pain and not the rain? Right. You said it. You said it. Can you stand? I want to see how bad you want this. You asked for this. You called upon this. You know what I'm saying? We understand the significance of when you call on something, when you pray for something, when you know, want something. I understand the degree behind that, and that's what he did. I went back. I don't watch the fights. I watch where your mindset set at. Do you truly believe that you really wanted this fight? In your estimation, does Ryan Garcia believe that he really wants this fight, or is he just simply in over his head and trapped now? He made it happen, he said. He said he did everything. He's doing everything to make it to this point. Come April the 22nd, we will see.
There you have it, folks. Fight Hub TV. Mr. Marcus Hayes with the one and only Mr. Calvin Ford, powered by Stage Front VIP. Thank you for your time, Calvin. Thank you.